We're back. This time we're taking a look at another one of my commander decks. This time it's my sliver deck. People love them, hate them. They become stupidly powerful really fast. I've had this deck for years since way back before commander even existed. We used to play it in uh, EDH. But uh, it's evolved along the way. I keep adding new cards here or there. There's still a few even of the classic cards that I'm missing. I never put a lot of money into it. It was just things that I had laying around or gotten trades. So uh, we'll get right in, take a look. Starting off, we have our Sliver Overlord as the commander. A bunch of other options out there, but he's always been the best for me since he has that nice ability that lets you uh, search for Slivers, put them in your hand, and uh, the, also the ability to gain control of target Slivers in case somebody steals one or plays one of their own. Now because we're running a five color deck, we're going to rely on a lot of mana fixing. So we don't have a lot of basic lands to start with. We've got a lot of multicolor lands and things like that. So we start off, we have three blue, three white, four red, four green, and three black. Those are just our basic lands to uh, get the uh, colors out there when we need them. And we have lots of different ways in here to go fetch the lands we need or multicolored lands or artifacts that generate different forms of colored mana so we can get around this and so we can get our gem hide slivers in play and then use them to tap for mana. Start off here with a basic Terramorphic Expanse. Tap it, sack it, go get a basic land of your choice. Let you get whatever color you may be missing at the time to uh, help you cast what you got in your hand. Next we have Evolving Wilds. Exact same card, different name. Nice that we can have two of them in here. Next we have a set of the Lair Lands. These are a really nice lands. Tap for three colors. Have all five in here. Trade-off is that when they come into play you have to return a land you control to your hand. But they do come into play um, untapped, unlike most lands. So extremely nice and we have all five of those in here. Starting out with uh, Krosis Catacombs, Treba's Ruins, Rith's Grove, Dargaz's Caldera, and Droma's Cavern. Next we have a later set of uh, Tri-Lands, not quite as good as the Lairs, but uh, pretty much the same thing. These do come into play tapped, but they don't require you to return a land like the other ones do. They also tap for uh, three colors, and we have a whole set of five in here. Crumbling Necropolis, Seaside Citadel, Savage Lands, Arcane Sanctum, and Jungle Shrine. Next we have a Transguild Promenade, Another one that enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you have to sacrifice it unless you pay one. And then it can tap for any color after that. Ancient Ziggurat taps for any color you want, but it can only be used to cast creatures. Got to keep that in mind with some of the uh, spell cards that are in here that are non-creatures. But for the most part in this deck, you're going to be casting creatures every turn. Next we have a Rupture Spire. Enters the battlefield tapped. You have to uh, sacrifice it unless you pay one, just like the uh, other one there. And then it taps for any mana, any color mana you want. Next we have Exotic Orchard. This one taps for any mana that any land your opponent controls can produce. Being that we're playing all five colors, it doesn't matter what color your opponents are playing. It's still going to be useful to you. Next we have a couple Vivid cards. This one's a Vivid Meadow. Taps for a white. Does come into play tapped, which kind of sucks. But it has two counters on it. You can tap it, remove a counter, and use it for whatever color you want. Next we have a Vivid Grove. Exact same thing as the Meadow, except this taps for green instead of white. And has the same ability with the counters. And lastly, we have a Command Tower. Again, if you're running anything with a multicolor deck, you should have a Command Tower in there. It taps for whatever color your commanders need, which your entire deck should be based around. So it's anything you need. Doesn't come into play tapped. And they're pretty cheap now that they've come pretty much standard in every Commander pre-built deck. They're really easy to come by. For our spell cards, we start off with Chromatic Lantern. It's a must-have in a five-color deck. It's a nice-to-have in pretty much any multicolor deck. Three-cast artifact. Taps for any uh, color you want. As well as making all of your lands tap for any color you want. In a five color deck, it is a must have to get out whatever you need when you need it. Next, we have Raise Dead. This is in here because of the way the slivers work in boosting all other slivers with special abilities, it lets you get back one that may have been killed early on that has an ability that you may need. 
disentombs the same thing, let you bring back a creature from the graveyard to your hand, get back one of those abilities that you might have lost early on you need later on. Soul Ring is a pretty much a staple in Commander. One drop that taps for two mana. Can't lose with that. Next we have Fires of Yavamaya. A three drop that gives all your creatures haste. Has a second ability to let you pump up a single creature for discarding it. That pretty much never gets used unless you're going to lose the game if you don't use it. Other than that, you're really using it for this haste ability. Next we have Aura Shards. If you're running green and white in a deck, you should be running Aura Shards. Especially in anything that's creature heavy like this deck is. Every time a creature enters the battlefield, you can destroy a target artifact or enchantment. Some May abilities, you can choose to do it if you want to. You can choose not to if you don't want to anger anybody at the table. But in the very least, it gives you that option to start wiping out some of those enchantments that exist in Commander. Next we have Wild Pair. Always a nice thing to have in a creature heavy deck. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, you can search your library for a creature card with the same total power and toughness, put it on the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. Most of your slivers are 1-1s, 2-2s, there's a few 3-3s, three now there's some bigger ones with the uh, newer set that came out. But the majority of them are pretty close to the same, and you're going to be able to get pretty much anything you want. Next we have Beastmaster's Ascension, another nice to have thing in a creature heavy deck. Every time a creature you control attacks, you put a counter on there. When you get seven or more counters on there, your creatures get plus five, plus five. Vessel of Endless Rest is pretty much in here for the Mana Stone tap for any color you want. It also has a cool ability that when it comes into play, you can take something from your graveyard, put it on the bottom of your library, let you get back one of those creatures that may have been killed off early on. Grim Rediscovery lets you choose one or both. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand and or return target land card from your graveyard to your hand. Let you get back one of your multicolored lands had they been killed off by some effect. It lets you get back creatures. Quest for Renewal is a stupidly powerful enchantment. Whenever a creature you control is tapped, you put a quest counter on there, that's tap for any reason. Once there's four quest counters on there, you untap your creatures on everybody else's untap step. Really nice to have, basically gives you four untap steps a turn, especially when you start getting uh, mana generating or different abilities that cause your creatures to tap. Mana Lith, standard mana stone, three drop for uh, any color. Cultivates in here, lets you get up to two lands, reveal them, you put one on the battlefield, one in your hand. So fixing in there to get you one of those colored lands that you might need to cast something in your hand if you haven't drawn that colored land yet. Descendant's Path is a stupidly good card in anything that's a themed or tribal type deck. At the beginning of your upkeep you reveal the top card of your library. If it shares a creature type with a creature on the battlefield, you get to play it at no cost. Otherwise it goes to the bottom of your library. Colony Hired Expeditions, another mana ramp slash fix. Every time a land comes into play you put a counter on there. When you got three counters on there, you can sack it and you can go get any two basic land cards and uh, put them into play uh, tapped. Let you go get colors that you may need to do whatever. Rites of Replication is one of my personal favorites in this deck. For four mana, let you copy uh, any creature on the battlefield, put a token out there. The uh, really nice ability about it is that if you uh, pay the kicker cost, which is an extra five, which you can do late game, it lets you put five copies of that target creature out there. You throw that on your creature who gives you the plus one, plus one, or the plus three, plus three, and it just pumps everybody up because now you have five of that creature plus the original one, and things get crazy. Another good combo is to cast that on your ward sliver and then call one of each color, and it gives your uh, slivers protection from pretty much all colors. Riptide Replicator is a really nice one. Pay X man and four, you put it into play, and uh, you call a creature type and a color. From that point on, you uh, pay for tap it. You get an XX creature of the color and type you said where X was the uh, X in the casting cost. Really nice, you call slivers, you put out some stupidly big slivers and they get all the bonuses from your other slivers. Door of Destinies, any tribal theme type deck should have one of these in there. It's kind of like Coat of Arms, but it only affects your guys and it ramps up a little slower. Every time uh, or you put it into play, you call a creature type. Every time you cast a spell of that type, you put a charge counter on there. Creatures you control that are that type get a plus one, plus one for each charge counter on there. Next we have Code of Arms. 
Pretty much the same as Door of Destinies. This one triggers right off the bat, though. Gives you that nice ramp ability where you get plus one, plus one for each creature that shares the type on the battlefield. So when you have five slivers on the battlefield, all of them have plus four, plus four. You got the one, and then the other four share a creature type with it. Becomes really ridiculous later on. Works in conjunction with Door of Destiny to boost them up to stupid heights. Next, we have Gem of Becoming. It's a three drop, pay three, tap it, sack it, search your library for an island, a swamp, and a mountain. Basically more mana fixing to get those lands you might be missing. And last we have a dark steel ingot, another mana stone, pretty standard, indestructible taps for any color. The creatures are really what make this deck. I've got a lot of the older ones in here because not too many people play slivers. The um, Older ones have the uh, bonus that all slivers gain abilities, where the new ones are only slivers you control. New ones are quite a bit better mana costed for some things as well. I'm trying to slowly replace them out as I get the new ones. Start off we have Necrotic. It's a 2-2. All slivers have pay 3. Sacrifice this permanent to destroy a permanent. Next we have Plated. All slivers gain plus 1. Pl er, uh, all slivers gain plus 0 plus 1. Spitting sliver. So 3-3, three, three, all slivers get first strike. Kind of odd to see first strike on a black card. Next we have Harmonic. It's one of my favorites in here. All slivers have, when this creature comes into play, destroy target artifact or enchantment. The uh, downside to these is that it's not a May ability, so eventually you're going to start destroying your own. Kind of like the War Shards better, but this one gives them an uh, option out there. This one's a Tarn Mauler. He builds up pretty good. Every time an opponent plays a spell, you get a plus one, plus one counter on him. And he's a changeling, so he's all creature types, so he is the sliver and does get all the bonuses from the other slivers. Next we have a winged sliver. All sliver creatures have flying. The muscle sliver, all slivers get plus one, plus one. Talon sliver, all slivers gain first strike. Crypt sliver, all slivers have tap to regenerate target sliver. It's really nice when you start having the tokens or whatever out there. You can tap anything to regenerate any of the others. Ward Sliver. When this one comes into play, you pick a color. All your slivers have protection from the chosen color. This is one of those that you play the Rite of Replication on with the kicker. You get five of these. You call all five colors. And uh, pretty much all your slivers have pro from all colors. And it makes them extremely hard to remove. Cryptoplasm is another shapeshifter. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can have it become a copy of in another target creature. If you do, it also gains this same ability so that it gets the same ability every turn. Starts out as a 2-2, but he can mimic any of your slivers. So whatever you have in play, you have him mimic like those plus ones and so on. Spinneret Sliver. All slivers have this creature can block it so it has flying. Basically gives them all reach. Synchronous Sliver. Gives all slivers vigilance. It's another odd colored one. These are from that plane shifted expansion, but uh, Vigilance in blue. Heart Sliver. All slivers have haste. Homing Sliver is one of my favorites. He gives each sliver card in your hand. Sliver Cycling, where you can pay three, discard it, and then search your library for a sliver. Put it into your hand. Let you go get whatever ones you pretty much want to pull off whatever combo you're looking for. Next we have Vampiric Sliver. All slivers have, whenever a creature that's dealt damage by this creature this turn is put into the graveyard, put a plus one, plus one counter on this sliver. It's one of them ways to start building them up and making them more uh, vicious. Next so we have Blade Sliver. All slivers get plus one, plus zero. Two-headed sliver. All slivers have, this creature can only be blocked by two or more creatures. That gets really disgusting when you start having quite the swarm out there and then they all require two blockers. Next we have Fungus Sliver. All sliver creatures have, whenever this creature is dealt damage, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Again, another way to start building them up. Next we have blur sliver. All slivers you have control hate, or all slivers you control have haste. This is one of the newer ones. Striking sliver. All slivers you control have first strike. Bone splinter. All slivers get plus two plus zero. Clot sliver. All slivers have pay two, regenerate this permanent. Acidic Sliver, all slivers have pay to sacrifice this permanent. This permanent deals two damage to target creature or player. Mewboid Changeling is a very interesting card in this deck. It combos well with the uh, commander. He's another shapeshifter. It's a 1-1. One, one. He's all creature types, so he matches your slivers. He can tap to uh, give target creature, gains all creature types till end of turn. So you can use that to give a opposing creature and turn him into a sliver and then use your commander's ability to gain control of target sliver. You can also use his second ability 
target creature loses all creature types till end of turn. If your opponent happens to have a changeling or, or a sliver of their own and they're uh, getting your bonuses, you can use it to make them lose the ability and then remove them with something else. Crystalline Sliver. All slivers have Shroud. This one's as hurtful as it is helpful. If they have Shroud, you can't target them with your own abilities either, but they also can't be targeted by your opponents. It's kind of a trade-off. Sliver Legion. All slivers gain plus one, plus one for each other sliver in play. Basically, it's the uh, second copy of Coat of Arms. It's also a 7-7, which isn't too shabby. Next, we have Horn Sliver. All slivers gain Trample. That's best when you get them start building up. They can't just chump block and get out of it. Hunter Sliver. All slivers have Provoke. Basically, whenever they attack, you can choose one of your opponent's creatures, untap them, and force them to block it. Sinew Sliver, all slivers get plus one, plus one. Another plain shifted card. Shifting Sliver, all slivers can't be blocked except by other slivers. Sentinel Sliver, all sliver creatures you control have Vigilance. Sedge Sliver, all slivers have this creature gets plus one, plus one as long as you have a Swamp. And pay black and regenerate this creature. Might Sliver gives all slivers plus two, plus two. Brood Sliver is whenever a sliver is dealt combat damage to a player. You may put a 1-1 colorless sliver under the battlefield. Opaline slivers, all slivers have whenever this creature becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Gem hide sliver makes all your slivers tap for whatever color mana you want. Quick sliver gives all slivers flash, he also has flash himself. Predatory sliver gives creatures you control a plus one plus one. Ghost flame makes all slivers colorless. Essence sliver gives all slivers lifelink. And the Telekinetic Sliver gives all slivers the ability to tap to tap a target permanent. Well, that about wraps it up for this one. I've got a few guys I want to swap in and uh, change when I get my hands on them. You can check out my maybe board on the tapped out deck list and uh, see what I'm looking at. Anyway, leave your suggestions, comments, and whatever below, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.